Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, good morning. Welcome back to Shelburne RV. It's a little bit of a cloudy day here. Supposed to have some rain this afternoon or this morning. I don't know. Sometime today. Supposed to have some rain. Uh, we got that basement air out of that Winnebago Journey that you saw them working on Friday. Um, we did pull the motor out. I thought the motor was bad. Pulled the motor out and the motor actually ran on the test bench. So they're, they're cleaning that out. You saw how nasty that coil was in last week's video. So they're gonna get that all cleaned up. They're actually out there washing it right now. And then I had another one show up this morning from, from Canada. Uh, it was a Luxor. I've never seen a Luxor, but it had the, uh, it's got the same basement air in it that the, uh, the Alphas have got in it. So uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on with it yet this morning. They're gonna, Cody's gonna get that other one cleaned out and put back together. Lewis is gonna die ugly that one. See if we can figure it out, but he drove all the way down from Toronto. So he's here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee to see Steve and his guys to do some basement air repair this morning. So we're gonna get on that, but it's a, it's a Monday morning. Uh, again, still didn't have a lot come in last week. So parking lot's looking a little empty. So we'll see, I, I think we actually had four basement air scheduled for this week. So it'll be a busy week basement air wise. Hopefully we can get all them turned around as quickly as we can and get them out the door. So we'll see the way it goes. But on another note, so Friday, we had a guy come and pick up a camper and he was in here for a uh, warranty repair um, on a grand design. Now. I am I am a Forest River, River Authorized Forest River Authorized Service Center. There you go. And so we can do warranty for Forest River, but we can't do it for anybody else. Jayco, Thor, um, Grand Design. Typically, if the customer calls them and says, "Hey, I want them to do it," that what they do is they'll they'll ask me to s submit a uh, submit a uh, estimate on the repairs and then once they approve that then they'll actually pay the customer pays me and then they'll send a check to the customer now we had a customer in here that had a water pump problem and of course on our paperwork when you sign in down there it specifically says that if insurance and warranty don't pay you have to pay and then get reimbursed from whoever your warranty is so signed off on all that Course came in Friday to pick it up. Of course, mad that he had to pay. And you know, I don't know how much clearer it is. I mean, we make you initial on the paperwork, but yeah, you know, it's just frustrating. You get some that come in here that are super easy to deal with, and then you know, you get a few every once in a while that you know, always looking looking for the cheapest way out. And unfortunately, you guys have seen some of these RVs. It doesn't quite work that way. And you know, I wish I could be a authorized grand design service center because we work on a lot of grand designs like the grand design product but they got all that wrapped up at the big box store here in town so anyways enough of my ramblings we're going to go down here i gotta go see the office ladies pick up some paperwork and then we're going to get back up here and see what's going on with these basement airs welcome back so this basement air out of this uh, winnebago journey is actually a 16 model 46515-811, built in 16. And remember last week when we looked at that, that thing was just filthy nasty. Uh, Lewis and Cody have everything washed out real good and they are working at the moment at changing out the bearing on the outdoor fan, which we always change because we always have trouble out of those going from that style to that style. So once we get that changed out, they're gonna put that back in retest. So back here on the journey, they've got this one tested and ready to go back in. Now, obviously we got a problem right there. This is, uh, this is why we always double check the discharge on those. And you've always got to look way up inside there and make sure none of that's blowed out. 
but as you can see that's a problem and this has been this way for a while this didn't just happen when we took it apart this has been blowed out of here this has been blown out of here for a few days so definitely got to get that now the only real easy way to get to that was to take the rear bumper off which we have done so we've got that off and mr cody's going to take and clean all the old stuff off and get it fitted with the new one and then get it all put back together now this luxor that came in this morning and i've never even heard of one of these before this guy's down from uh ontario canada luxor this thing was built in 94 so here's the basement air that was in this one now the biggest difference in this model and it's very much like the ones that were in the uh the alphas because of the discharge but this one does not have a heat pump this is air conditioner only so we got in here and got the test and, and line two had no power well on these older models uh they have a switch and this one was up above the microwave and so that switch has to be turned from 30 to 50 so it was disabling compressor number two now we've got our test box onto it so we're going to power this thing up and see what it does so we've got this basement air out of this luxor now you can see kind of looks like oil possibly now when we test run this this compressor here was only pulling like 1.2 amps so we're really going to have to look all this stuff over see what's going on see if we got something that's leaked out right here but look at the evap and look at all that so this thing's in a bad bad way we're gonna go in here and clean this probably pull all this off we've got some other stuff that we'll put on here make that a lot better but there's been an animal in that for certain so we'll have to get all that cleaned up so we'll get into this now and see what we can figure out okay so i've got my tank of nitrogen on this basement air now we noticed when we started that we had it looked like a little bit of oil now i'm gonna take i'm gonna try to show you here if you i don't know it's gonna be hard to see there's actually a crack right there and so when i put my nitrogen in there it started bubbling out from there so we're gonna get that brazed up and retest but that's probably where it's leaking at well we know it's where it's leaking at we just hope it's not any further than what we got so now that i've gone in there and brazed up that point now i put a little extra on there just to try to give it some strength now this thing vibrating is what's done that. So we're gonna put some tie offs in there to try to solve that. And then right now we've got our gauges on about 250, 250 pounds of nitrogen. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a few minutes. And then uh, we're gonna, we should be good. I'm not dropping and I'm set there. The tank's actually off at the moment. So we should be good. So we're gonna let that sit. All right, so Mr. Cody has got this Winnebago journey all finished up. Now I want you to look at how much tape that it took to, to fix that. Now there was a place all the way back in there and he had to rebuild all that down in there. So he's got all that done and that thing's ready to go out to the customer. Um, and I think you had what, 23, 24 degrees differential. Yeah, so it's, that thing's cranking now. Uh, the little sliding camper, he's got everything repaired on that. So it's ready to go out and this uh, Luxor so, I, you know, I was telling you guys that we only had like 1.54 amps on compressor two. Well, further investigation, we found out that the, um, the rotor had a problem inside the compressor. So it was just free spinning and that's why the amp draw was so low. So we ended up having to put a compressor um, in uh, zone two. Now, remember we had, we had the line that was busted right there and then we did have to put a compressor in too now i don't have it wired up just yet i'm gonna let lewis get it all washed out and he's got it all cleaned out and then this piece that was falling out right here he actually went in here and replaced it with a nice piece of that foam that we have so at this point it's just getting all the coils cleaned up and getting that done and we've already got them charged and ready so as soon as it gets them charged we'll take it back in and run it see what we got going on so mr lewis has got the basement air back in this luxor now remember we had that line broke and we did have to put a compressor in it and he did a bunch of cleaning and so now we've got it back in he's at lunch the only thing he's got left is just the uh 110 and we'll be ready to test this see how it runs so lewis has got the air conditioner running on this luxor and as you can see 
that rascal is running water like crazy. So I think he had 49 degrees in the uh, coach when he tested, and it's it's about 80 outside right now. So that rascal is cranking. Okay, so just one little thing we got to finish up on this journey. The customer had stated that uh, several of the electrical um, receptacles, there's one here, one in there, and then two back here in the back bedroom had quit working. Now, we got in here and got to investigating, and let me show you what we found. I'm gonna turn this camera around. So there's a receptacle back there, and there's one over here on the wall, and so what we found out when we got to testing was that there was a junction box back here. See if I can get my phone out here and get some light on the subject. There was a junction box. Now you can see where those, uh, those connectors were at. There was actually a junction box right there. And so when we got to looking, we found out that the wire feed that was feeding that is bad. So we're gonna have to abandon that because that is in this, obviously in the wall is the way they run that, somewhere in this wall. Now, you can see where that is versus where the bed is, and the beauty about it is the breaker box is right there. So we're actually gonna take a piece of Romex and run it over there and come in and abandon that piece and then tie the power in so we can get that. But yeah, it took us several hours to figure that out because you can see we've had, you know, we're testing all the receptacles, receptacles, receptacles in here we've actually had some power we were looking down in there we've had all the receptacles you can see that one's out i mean that's the problem with this kind of stuff is you just got to start pulling everything apart and seeing where the short stops and continues on and so we just had to go through receptacle there had to go through with our little tester and just start trying to figure out where the problem is but the issue is with the wire back there so we're going to fix that up Okay, so this morning, uh, Cody and I have been working on a 2004 Winnebago Vectra. Now, I've been talking to this customer a little bit about what's going on with this unit, and he's been doing a real good job uh, keeping track of the actual temperatures uh, from what the thermostat reads versus what it actually is the discharge temperature is. And he's been running about 15 degrees um, of differential temperature. So Cody and I actually got in here and got to doing some, some looking this morning and I'm gonna show you what we found. So Cody got in here and got to running this thing and we probably ran this maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's water dripping. This thing is kicking so much water out of it. This air unit's actually doing really, really well. The amp draws are very close to each other. It does have the new board in it. So I'm not upset with how this unit is running. This unit is, is really doing well. Uh, we actually went up inside the bedroom and I put my bore scope down inside to look at the coil and the coil was very, very clean. The gentleman has been changing the filter on this about every two weeks. So he's done a, an excellent job keeping those filters clean. So one thing we always look at again on the Winnebago's is that discharge. We wanna make sure that the air is actually getting from there up the wall and through the vents. Now, I'm gonna show you what we found here. Cody went in here and took this plate off on the, on the engine bay right here. And if you notice right here, this is all blowed out. Every bit of this all the way down. And so what's happening is, is he's air conditioning the outside of the camper. Now, I can reach my arm up inside here and it stops about right here. So we're gonna go in here and clean all this off we know we're getting 15 degrees differential, so we're gonna go ahead and clean all this off because that'd be all wiped off for the new tape to stick to it. And this is very common on the Winnebago's that we found because of that ductwork being, you know, it was just, uh, it's just a little foam board. And so this is what ends up happening. So Cody's gonna go in here and again, clean all that off, uh, spray nine it, clean it real good. And then we're gonna go in here and retape all that. And we're gonna retest it. Now, I did put a temperature sensor, a temperature thermometer on the counter because we are gonna verify that the uh, the thermostat is actually reading correctly for what I have inside there. But he's gonna redo that. We're gonna retest and see if we can get our 20 to 21 degrees differential. All right, so Cody's had this uh, basement air running for about 40 minutes. Let's go in here and see what we got on temperatures. All right, let's go over here and see what kind of temp we have. 
So 76 on there. I put another one in here just to double check it. That's the same. So we know that thermostat temperature is correct. Let's go up here, 76. So 56 is 20 degrees. Let's see what we got coming out of that vent right there. That is 41 degrees. That is awesome. So this thing, all that duct work in the back being, being undone has fixed all this. So yeah, this is the most important thing about basement, the basement areas in the Winnebago is that duct work is so vital to how this thing cools and the unit was working fine. I mean, it, it, was, it had good amp draw. We had, uh, we got lots of water pouring out of it. So we know it's, it's, we know the charge and all is correct, but our differential temperatures were different. And when, when we found that those, uh, that the, the duct work was all blowed out, you can see the result. This one here is awesome and it's ready to go. All right. So good morning. We're back Thursday, finally. Or as I call it, Monday part three. Uh, so we're back here this morning on this Providence uh, big class A motor coach. Uh, and it's got generator problems. Now it is throwing a code 15 which is a frequency issue, typically is a, uh, is a controller problem. Uh, the PC controller's probably got an issue. Uh, but let me, let me turn this camera around because I'm gonna show you how you have to ch check this, uh, this board. So we've got the Cummins 8,000 watt uh, diesel generator that's in this. Now that controller is back in there. But the problem is, how do you get to that? Well, you gotta pull the generator out. Well, the other bad part about this is, is this generator's not on a slide. So now we've got to either jack this thing up and drop it out the bottom or this whole front clip's got to come off, which I have no way to jack this up. So we're going to have to go around there and take all those screws loose. The problem is if you look down there, those are riveted because this door, when it opens up, you can't put the bolts in there because the door hit. So we've got to take this door off. We've got to drill out those rivets. We gotta unbolt all this, take the hood off, <clears throat> get this whole clip out, and then we can start working on getting this generator out. Now, the other thing is, see how many hours this generator's got? About 767. If we're gonna go to all this work to pull this out, well, we need to go ahead and do a thousand hour service on this generator while we have it out. So typically at a thousand hour service, you know, Cummins, Cummins wants us to go ahead and change the belt which on these, the belt, the belt has no tensioner. You just, it's just, it's just rolled on with the water pump um, and the, and the, uh, uh, the pulley. So there's no tensioner. So at a thousand hours, they want you to change the, uh, the belt, the water pump, the thermostat, the high temp sensors, and typically all the hoses. Now, the other issue is, and we've seen this in the little Kubota diesels quite a bit, is the uh, green antifreeze. Now, Everybody puts green antifreeze in almost all these generators. I saw I saw several years ago, uh, we were working on one that kept throwing a high temp uh, limit, over temping. And so we got into it and there was a bunch of calcium buildup around the, uh, uh, the temp sensor. And so when we went to try to get it out, of course it broke off the sensor and broke off the housing and it was just caked in there so bad. And when I called Cummins, was talking to them about that, they asked me, first thing they asked me, well, what color was the antifreeze? Well, the antifreeze was green. Oh, well, that's your problem. You're supposed to be using the Cummins blue uh, antifreeze. Come to find out these little Kubota engines have a little bit of electrolysis is what they're telling me. And so the calcium that's in the water over, over a long period of time obviously will build up around some of those sensors and that's what caused all that calcium build up around the sensor. So they'll recommend obviously all of the hoses and then the blue Cummins uh, antifreeze to go back in there. Guys, don't make this up. This is just what Cummins tells us. So. We're gonna get this turned around here and Cody's gonna start tearing in this, but obviously a little bit of work to try to get that generator out of this camper. So as you can see, we got this generator out. Let's go over here and talk about it just a second. Okay, so you can see we've got the generator over here on the test bench. Now we've got a code 15 under frequency fault. Now we have gone through and made sure that those are correct. There's no vent pins, there's no corrosion, nothing of that nature. Now, PMA, PMA connections are these connections right here. We've gone through and verified that they're all good and made sure we didn't have no problems there. 
Um, the idle seems to be fine. If problem not resolved, replace controller assembly. Now, this controller assembly is one ginormous board because this is an inverter generator. This doesn't have a regular just PC board in it with, with brushes for the stator. This is a, this is a uh, uh, little bit better generator, it seems sometimes, but the problem is into this control board. Now, you have to buy that whole assembly, which obviously is this part number right there. Now, some of y'all are gonna look at the picture and go, well, what about that part number? That is not available to anybody. So you have to buy that, which is $2,800. Now, the problem with that is I've only ever seen one other inverter generator like this, uh, and it wasn't in here for those problems right there. Now, if it was just a typical, regular Cummins uh, generator with a controller, uh, I could put my G-Man on that, or I could just get a controller and put a controller on there, and we could go in there and test that and see what was going on, but that one being $2,800, I'm not gonna just throw a board on that just to see if it's gonna work. Uh, so probably what I'm gonna do is we're, we're, I think in the best interest of the customer is we're gonna actually get him to take it down to Cummins since we've got it all out. Uh, either I deliver or he can take it down there. Um, get it down to Cummins and maybe get a second opinion on that before we drop $2,800 on a part we can't return. Um, I think it's probably the, the better solution at the moment because, again, I've not ever only seen one. It wasn't in here for that. So I'm going to give him a call here in just a minute, but we're going to go over here. We've got a slide, another slide floor that we're working on. We'll take you over here and show you this. So we got this Chaparral fifth wheel that has a bad floor. Now, these there's two slides. They're identical. That slide's got just as bad a problem as this slide does. Now, obviously, we're going to go in here and clean all this out, but... Let me show you this over here, because again, this is another one of those rubber floor situations, as you can see. So, that's got a problem. That's had lots of water in there. So, Mr. Dale's gonna get that out. And then, of course, we've got, this is all particle board. We're gonna put, we're gonna, we've got some one inch birch we're gonna fix all this with. Well, it's Friday afternoon. Cousin Gary's been out sick today. Allerg allergies around here starting to get pretty mean so he was hurting pretty good yesterday so he laid out on me today poor guy so getting getting towards the end of the day kind of finishing up here i'm i'm actually down here moving campers because it's just what i do some days but easter easter weekend i hope everybody has a great weekend with your families thanks for watching appreciate all the comments from last week's video i hope everybody has a great weekend and Remember that this video is Cousin Gary approved. Take care.